How's it going guys? It's Kyle with the How To Guy 123 here. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Android Studio on Windows 10 or 11. Android Studio is an IDE, which will allow you to develop apps for Android. Also in this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up an AVD. An AVD is also known as an Android Virtual Device, and this will allow you to emulate Android on your Windows PC. This will make debugging and testing your app a lot easier, as you won't have to connect a physical Android device to test your app. So the first thing we actually need to do before installing Android Studio is to download and install the Java Development Kit, also known as a JDK. This isn't actually 100% necessary as the latest versions of Android Studio actually come with OpenJDK pre-installed. However, it's still a good idea to install JDK on your own. Installing JDK on your own is recommended as you'll be able to update it separately from Android Studio, or if you ever want to work on the command line, you would need to install JDK. Also, in my opinion, if you're going to be developing and coding in Java, it's a good idea to know how to install the JDK on your own, which I'll show you how to do in this tutorial. So I'll leave a link to anything we need to download in this tutorial in the description below. So the first link in the description will be for the JDK. Once you're on this page, go ahead and scroll down and make sure you click on the Windows tab here, and that will bring you to the JDK download for Windows. Currently, the latest version of the Java development kit while I'm making this video is version 17.0.2, but it's always a good idea to download the latest version of the JDK. Anyways, once again, make sure you click on the Windows tab to download JDK for Windows, and then download the x64 installer. So go ahead and click on the download link. And now it's going to ask you where on your computer do you want to save the JDK installer. I'm going to put it on my desktop just for easy access. And once JDK has finished downloading, go ahead and click on the installer to open it. It's pretty straightforward from here. Just go ahead and click on the next button. It's going to ask you where do you want to install the JDK. I recommend leaving any software we install in this tutorial in its default location. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on next. And that's going to install the JDK. This shouldn't take too long. And once it's done, we can just close out of the installer. We can now actually go ahead and delete the JDK installer as we don't need it anymore. We are now going to need to set up some environment variables within Windows. The reason we need to do this is to let Android Studio or any Java IDE know where our Java development kit or our Java runtime environment is installed on our computer. So the first thing we'll need to do is find where our JDK is installed to, its default location. So if we open up the file explorer and head to this PC, so the default location for your JDK is in your C drive, program files, Java, and then you'll see a folder here called JDK and its version number, so in my case, 17.0.2. So go ahead and open it. Now take the file explorer and drag it to the right side of your screen, just temporarily. Now to edit the environment variables within Windows, you can either come to the search bar and type uh, environment variables, and you'll need to choose the match that says edit the system environment variables, and that's going to open up the system properties. Alternatively, you can go to Windows settings, click on system, about, then under related settings, choose advanced system settings. And that will also open up the system properties. Now click on environment variables, and you'll see a list of all the environment variables on our Windows install. In this tutorial, we'll just be focusing on the system variables. Go ahead and scroll down until you see the path variable. Click on it and then click on edit. Now come back here to our JDK folder, open up the bin folder. Now come up here to the address bar and copy the file path of our bin folder. Come back to our environment variables and you'll see a list of all these different uh, file paths. Just come to the bottom in the white space here and double click and you'll be able to paste the file path for our bin folder and just paste it in there and then click on OK. We'll now need to make another environment variable called Java Home. So click on the new button here under variable name, call this java underscore home, all in caps, and under variable value, come back here to the file explorer and go back one. So we're in our JDK root folder. Once again, come back up here to the address bar and copy the file path of our JDK folder and paste that under variable value. So it should be your program file, Java, and then JDK with the version number of your JDK version. Once you pasted that in, go ahead and click on OK, and then OK again to exit out of your environment variables, and then once again click on OK to exit out of the system properties. 
we can now exit out of the file explorer as well and just to make sure that our jdk was set up correctly we're going to want to open up a uh, command prompt now you're going to want to type in the command java space minus version and then hit enter and if the jdk was installed correctly you'll get this prompt and it should say java version and the version of java that you installed which in my case was 17.0.2 so the java development kit was installed successfully we can now close out of command prompt and we can finally head back into our internet browser and download android studio so once again i'll leave a link to download android studio in the description below once you're on this page click on the green download button here and then scroll down to the bottom and check the checkbox here to accept the license agreement then click on download android studio bumblebee which is the latest version of android studio when i'm recording this video now it's going to ask you where in your pc do you want to save the installer once again i'm going to put it on my desktop for easy access now the android studio installer is a bit of a large file so it might take a few minutes to download all right so the installer is now finished downloading we can go ahead and click on it to install it Now that the Android Studio setup is open, just go ahead and click on next. When it asks you which components do you want to install, make sure that Android Virtual Device is checked here. Then click on next. Once again, install Android Studio to its default location, then click next, and then click on install. That's going to go ahead and install Android Studio. Once again, this might take a few minutes. So the setup for Android Studio is now finished. Go ahead and click on next. Now check the box here to start Android Studio once we click on finish. Once Android Studio opens, it's going to ask us if we want to import our Android Studio settings, either if you've used an older version of Android Studio before, or if you want to import any settings from an old computer, you can do so here. But in this case, I'm going to choose do not import any settings. Then I'm going to click on OK. And you can see Android Studio Bumblebee. Now you're going to get this pop-up window and it's going to ask you about data sharing in Android Studio. I'm assuming this is going to send any troubleshooting data back to Google to help improve Android Studio. But in this case, I'm just going to choose don't send. Now we're at the Android Studio setup wizard and you can see we're at a welcome screen. Here we're going to configure Android Studio to the way we like it and also install the Android SDK, also known as the Android Software Development Kit. So go ahead and click on next. Under install type, we get two options, either a standard or custom install. In this case, we'll just choose standard, then click next. Now under our UI theme, we can either choose Dracula, which is a dark theme for your IDE, or you can also choose a light mode. But I think most people, including myself, prefer Dracula, which is the dark theme. Once you've chosen your UI theme, go ahead and click on next. Here you can verify your settings, but everything looks fine here. Otherwise, go ahead and click on next. Here we now need to accept the license agreement for the Android SDK. So make sure that Android SDK license is highlighted here. Then in the bottom right hand corner, click on accept to accept the license agreement for the Android SDK. Uh, once you've done that, come back to the list of licenses here and then highlight Android SDK preview license and also accept the license agreement for that. Once you've accepted the license agreement, go ahead and click on finish. And now the setup wizard is going to uh, download the Android SDK. All right, so the Android SDK has finished installing. Go ahead and click on finish. Now we're brought to a welcome screen and we can now click on new project to create a new app. A new project window is going to open and here on the side you can see a list of the different devices that you can develop an app for. I believe most people are just going to be developing for phone and tablet. Now here you can choose a template for the type of app you're going to be developing. For this example I'm just going to choose an empty activity and click on next. Under name this is going to be the name for your app. So I'll call mine Android Studio Demo. Under package name, by default, it's going to be com.example.youramapname. And I recommend changing the example to either a username, a company name, or your own name. Uh, it's just better than leaving it as com.example. So in my case, mine set to THG, the how-to guy. Uh, under save location, this is where your app files are going to be saved. Uh, under language, we have two options, and this is going to be the programming language you'll be developing your app in. Uh, we have two options here, either Java or Kotlin. If you haven't heard of Kotlin before, it's a new programming language, and it's mostly used for developing Android apps. As of 2019, it's Google's preferred programming language for developers to develop their app in. However, in my case, I still prefer to program my apps in Java. 
I've been programming Java for a number of years now, and it's just what I'm comfortable with. And Java is still 100% supported, so there's no harm in programming your app in Java. However, if you really want to get serious in programming apps for Android, it's not a bad idea to learn how to program in Kotlin. Anyways, for this example, just going to choose Java. Next, under minimum SDK, this is the lowest version of Android that your app is going to be able to run on. You can see here that it says our app will be able to run on 98% of devices. So this means that 98% of Android devices in use in the world run either Android 5.0 or above or later. You can see here if I change the API to API 26 or Android 8, you see that our app will only be able to run on 82.7% of devices in use. So you can choose whichever API you would like. Uh, I believe Android 5.0 should be fine for now. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on finish. We're now in Android Studio. And when you first open up the IDE, it takes a few seconds to get everything loaded. And you can see a progress bar in the bottom right hand corner of our screen here. So we're going to want to wait for that to finish loading. I do notice that it does take about a minute to load into the IDE. And now that everything is loaded, we are ready to work in Android Studio. I'm not going to go into too much detail on actually how to develop an app in this tutorial. Uh, I will go over a few of the basics though. Uh, by default, it opens up our main activity, which here is where you're going to stick your main Java code. And your Java files are located in the app folder, Java, your package name, and then you have your main activity here. And then here you'll have a whole bunch of other Java files that you create. I do notice that for some reason in the latest version of Android Studio, uh, your main activity throws an error, even though you haven't programmed anything yet. We also have our main activity XML, which is located in this res folder and layout. And this is where we'll design our user interface. So you'll be able to add text, buttons, images, switches, and things of that nature. And whenever you create a new project, Google puts this hello world text on the screen. So whenever you launch your app for the first time, it's going to say hello world. We can actually go ahead and change this. So we'll change it to subscribe to the how to guy one two three so now when we launch our app it's going to say subscribe to the how to guy one two three on the screen so now we'll need to set up our android virtual device if we want to emulate android on our windows pc to test our app now before we do that we need to make sure that we have virtualization enabled in our computer's bios if it's disabled whenever you run your virtual device it might crash so in order to verify this, you're going to need to open up Task Manager. On Windows 10, you can just right click on the taskbar and click on Task Manager to open it. Now come over here to the Performance tab and click on CPU. And here you'll see a whole bunch of information about your CPU. Come down here to where it says Virtualization. And if it's enabled, you're good to go. Virtualization is enabled in your computer's BIOS. And when you run your virtual device, it should run fine. Otherwise, if this is set to disabled, you'll need to go into your computer's BIOS and enable virtualization. Fortunately, I have a tutorial on how to do this, and I'll link that in the description below if you want to check it out. Go ahead and watch the video, enable virtualization, and then come back and continue the rest of the video. So now that we've verified that virtualization is enabled, we can close out of Task Manager here. And to create an Android virtual device, in Android Studio, come up here to the top right hand corner of your screen, where it says no devices. Click on the drop down and then click on device manager. Now click on create device. This window is going to pop up and you'll see a bunch of different Google devices that we can emulate on our PC in order to test our app. You can pretty much choose whichever one you want. Another benefit of testing your app with an AVD is that you can emulate different, uh, different phones in order to test your app. So you'll be able to emulate phones with different resolutions, different screen sizes, and emulate different hardware to make sure that your app runs well on different phones and configurations. So for this example, I'm going to choose the Pixel 4 and I'm going to click on Next. We'll now need to download Android for this virtual device. So you can choose whichever version of Android you want to run on this virtual device. In this case, I'll just choose Android 11, also known as Android R. So just choose the version of Android you want to download and then click on the download button. And now it's going to go ahead and download Android for our virtual device. All right, Android 11 is now finished downloading. Go ahead and click on finish. And now on the list here, make sure that the version of Android that you downloaded is highlighted. Then click on next. You can give your virtual device a name. I'll just leave it at Pixel 4. You can change the orientation that your device boots up in if you would like. 
just going to leave that at portrait. Also, if you want to configure some advanced settings, you can click on show advanced settings and you can tinker around into here if you would like. Uh, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to leave everything at default and I'm just going to click on finish. You can now see in the device manager, we've created a Pixel 4 virtual device. So now we can launch our app in the Android emulator. In the top right hand corner here in Android Studio, just click on the drop down and make sure that your emulator is selected. So in my case, my emulator is a Pixel 4. Once your emulator is selected, click on the green play button here to launch your app in the emulator. The first time you launch the emulator, it might take a bit longer to boot up as it needs to install Android onto the emulator itself. And once Android is set up, Android Studio is going to install your app onto the emulator. And once your app is installed, it's going to launch. And here's our app. You can see on the screen here, it says subscribe to the how to guide one, two, three, as we programmed earlier. And just as a side note, this is a full fledged Android emulator. So I can control the emulator with my mouse. I can left click on the home button to go to the home screen. I can click and drag to scroll to different pages on the home screen. I can click and drag up to open the app tray and I can left click on our app here to launch it again. And that's pretty much all there is to this tutorial. If this video helps, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.